Thank you for joining us today. During this video, we will be sharing information about the two-site regional format and highlighting the team experience in this format. Let's dive right in. So how does the two-site regional format work? The regionals will take place at two sites across the country, with each site hosting eight teams. Each site will host four consecutive game days starting on Friday through Monday on the regional weekend. Teams assigned to each site will play either in a Friday regional semifinal and advance to a Sunday regional final, or will play in a Saturday regional semifinal and advance to a Monday regional final. Teams will have a day of rest between the regional semifinals and the regional finals. Four regional pods will exist on the bracket with the number one true seeds pod paired with the number four true seeds pod on the left side of the bracket, while the number two true seeds pod and the number three true seeds pod will be paired on the right side of the bracket. Teams are assigned to sites based on the bracketing principle that says, by order of the S curve, the committee will assign each team to a regional and first second round site by taking into account distance from site, mode of transportation, and accessibility by fans. The bracketing principles also ensure that the number one overall seeded team will be assigned to a regional pod with game days on Friday and Sunday. As you can see here, each regional pod is identified with a different color of shading. The yellow highlight shows the location on the bracket where seeds one through four are placed, with the number one true seed always placed in the top left pod. The number two true seed is placed in the top right pod. The number three true seed is placed in the bottom right pod and paired on the same side of the bracket with the number two true seed. And finally, the number four true seed is placed in the bottom left pod and paired on the same side of the bracket with the number one true seed. This gives you the four regional pods. Now let's look at the regional site assignments. Based on the bracketing principle, Team A will be sent to the regional site that is geographically closest to them. The city and seed number will be used to identify each pod on the bracket. Since Team A is the overall number one seed, this pod will be identified with a one. As the number two true seed, Team B will be placed into the bracket next. Team B will be sent to the regional that is closest to them, and the pod name will include a two, since Team B is the overall number two seed. As the number three true seed, Team C will be placed into the bracket next. If the overall number three seed is closer proximity to a regional that already has the one and two seeds in it, they will be sent to the other regional site. As the number four true seed, Team D will be placed into the bracket next. As the last pod to be assigned, Team D will be sent to the regional that has an opening. This process of placing remaining teams into the bracket will continue by following the same bracketing principles using S-curve geography and attempting to keep conference teams from meeting until the regional final round. Now let's talk about the on-site logistics and what teams should expect. This table identifies team opportunities and experiences in venue. All teams will have access to the game court for a scheduled practice and shoot around. Length of these opportunities are identified in the table. The first 10 minutes of each team's practice at the regional will be open for media and is a requirement for the team. Teams should also note that locker rooms will be shared with teams from the other regional pod. Therefore, team-specific decor may not be present due to the short turnaround between teams using the same locker rooms. Teams should also be prepared to take all items with them when they depart the facility and exercise patience as the facilities and hosts work to clean and turn over locker rooms, sometimes multiple times a day. Other items to be aware of include, the court will open to teams 60 minutes prior to the regional semifinal games and 90 minutes prior to the regional final games. Teams who advance Friday and Saturday will have media obligations the next morning, such as ESPN interview, NCAA radio interviews, a press conference, and open locker room time. The court will not be available during this same window for practice due to game day shoot-arounds of the other regional pod. 
advancing teams may book alternate practice sites through the host or practice at the venue during their assigned time. Advancing teams need to notify the host staff if they will practice at the venue. We hope you found this information helpful as you prepare for the NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championship. If you have any additional questions, please don't hesitate to contact us at diwbkb at ncaa.org.